Welcome to another Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt. Today we're talking about how to get the cheapest boat insurance with great coverage. You know you've got to have insurance on your boat and you don't want to overpay and yet you also don't want to have a problem if you do have a claim. So I'm going to talk through both situations. We're going to start with what impacts your insurance premium. Some of the things are, are pretty uh, obvious. The boat value. Um, the other things may not be the boat location. Where are you located in the U.S.? So when you ask on Facebook, what's everybody else paying for this boat? That's only a small part of it. If you're in Florida in the hurricane zone, your premium is going to be much different than somebody that's in Iowa on an inland lake. Uh, if you're located <clears throat> on the East Coast or the West Coast, if you're in the Gulf or the Atlantic, all of those are going to impact the premium. The storage location. Are you storing the boat in your driveway? Are you storing the boat at a marina? In a storage lot? Are you on a lift in the water? Are you storing it at your second home where there's not security around? All of those things will have an impact on your insurance premium. Trailer or no trailer? Will you be trailering it or do you not have a trailer at all to insure? That's going to impact it because there's additional risk with trailering, um, with trailering the boat. Your boat ownership history. Have you ever owned a boat before? So if you are a first-time boat owner or you've never operated a boat before, they'll ask different questions. Um, that's going to impact the level of risk the insurance company puts on your total package, and that's going to impact your premium. A big one is the speed. How fast does your boat go? Uh, is it a 18-mile-an-hour pontoon? Or is it a 95-mile-an-hour speedboat uh, that goes offshore? That's going to have a major impact. Obviously, the faster the boat goes, the higher the premium is going to be. The boat type. Is it a little fishing boat? Is it a yacht? Um, is, it, uh, is it a tow boat? What's the type of boat? And they're going to have that in their calculation as well. Another one that many people don't consider is the owner's credit. If you have poor credit, it's going to have an impact on your insurance premium. You're going to pay a higher premium uh, because there's a, a better probability in the way they do their actuarial tables. There's a higher probability that there's going to be a claim. And then this is a major one that almost nobody considers. It's the insurance company's overall portfolio. The insurance company's goal is to limit their risk. So if they have too many boats in South Florida, um, they may increase the premiums on boats in South Florida because they don't want to take the risk if a hurricane comes through. If they have uh, too many high-end premium boats that have high values, they may want to uh, increase their premiums because they're, they're too heavily weighted. If they don't have enough of the type of boats that you offer or that you're buying, um, they may have a little bit of a discount uh, compared to others. And, and that's changing all the time. So the insurance premium that somebody's paying that bought a year ago um, on the same exact boat in the same location may be slightly or, or very different because of that insurance company's overall portfolio. And then another one is if you're in the hurricane area, um, what was the hurricane season last year? You'll find a lot of insurance companies will pull out of a market area or jack the premiums way up after a bad hurricane season because everything is off on their actuarial tables and they're going to pass that on to the consumer. If you want to stick with your insurance with them, that's fine, but you're going to have to pay for it. Others who may not have been as heavily weighted in that area may open up and now be more economical um, in those hurricane zones. So all of those have an impact on your overall insurance premium. So think about that. If you're looking at uh, Geico or Progressive or Boat US or any of the, the main boat ins insurance companies, um, remember that you may want to try multiple ones and we'll get to that in just a little bit. So that's how it's impacted. Now, how do you make sure you have the great coverage? Because cheap boat insurance is going to be a major problem if you have a claim. Um, I have a, a friend of mine I know that uh, bought a, a brand new uh, Tritune, 
took it down to the to their vacation before they even put it in the water a drunk driver smashed into it and totaled it they'd only had maybe 10 hours on the boat well they had cheap insurance uh, because they went through their homeowners coverage it was easy it was cheap they just did it and said no big deal well after this claim they found out that they actually were covered under the book value which is the market value of that boat, which if you buy a brand new one is going to come down considerably as soon as you as soon as you get your first hour on it um, versus an agreed value, which is we we're going to if there's a claim, we're going to address that claim at this value, which is typically the sales price. So if you don't have that agreed value, you're susceptible to the market value, which is probably going to be significantly lower. So I recommend making sure that your agreed value policy and you know what that value is so you don't have that situation if there's a claim. Parts and labor rate. What happens if you have a mechanical claim? You hit a stump, um, you, you have some damage to the fiberglass. If there's a claim, how much will they pay to fix it? So a shop is going to have a, a general shop rate. It varies by shop to shop. It varies by region. It may be uh, as low as $89 an hour. It may be as high as $189 an hour. Now, the insurance company will give you a, a rate that they'll say, our shop rate that we'll pay is only $119. Now, you have a choice. You can go to the $189 an hour shop which is typically going to be a better shop. They do a better job in most cases. Maybe it's your preferred shop where your boat is, where you bought your boat. You've got a relationship with them. You're going to have to cover the difference between what they'll pay and what the actual shop rate is. The other is they may not even let you choose the shop. They may have a relationship with shops and say, nope, you can't use whoever you want. You have to take it to this shop because we've already negotiated the rate and they are within our labor rates. Um, and, and what are they going to pay for parts? Are they going to put OEM parts back in? Are they going to go to some other cheaper parts? All of that is laid out in the policy. And if you ask your agent, they should be able to answer those questions because you don't want to have to cheap out on the labor rate and get cheaper parts in your brand new boat or your whatever your boat is um, so the insurance company can save some money because you know in boating, it makes a difference. Cheap parts, cheap labor is typically going to cause major headaches down the line. Now, what happens if you have a major catastrophe and your boat sinks? Who's going to pay to clean it up? That includes... Um, pulling it, floating it, getting it out of the water, that, that cleanup, um, which is most will cover that, but who's responsible for the environmental cleanup, the gas and the oil that gets into the water. That's a separate cost. And some insurance companies won't cover that. That part is left to the owner of the boat. And that can be very expensive depending on the state and the laws in your state, how that cleanup needs to be handled. And that can be very expensive. I've seen examples where it's as high as $10,000 for just the environmental cleanup. After they float the boat, they crane it out, and they, they get it back on the trailer, there's that environmental cleanup that can be very expensive. Towing and reimbursement. What happens... If you break down and you have a, a issue out on the water, are they going to tow that back to the dock and, and get it safely um, on land? What happens if you have an accident on the trailer? How are they going to handle that? Now, you may that may be covered by your auto insurance coverage as well, so you may want to check that. Um, most marine insurance companies understand you don't want to leave a boat sitting on the water. That's one of the worst places it could be left um, if it's not tied up at a marina or, or somewhere safe. Um, you certainly don't want to leave it on the side of the road. It's too easy to have a, a major issue there. Um, but each insurance company has a policy of how they handle towing on the water and on land. And you want to make sure you understand what that is. A big one, especially in the, the colder states in the Midwest, upper Midwest, uh, northeast what if there's a claim how quickly will they approve your claim so you can get back out on the water do they have a policy that says if your claim is under ten thousand dollars fifteen thousand um, dollars and it's by a certified mechanic 
or a certified um, service shop, we're just going to approve it. Most marine insurance companies have that. Not all, but most of them. Most homeowners insurance companies do not because they don't understand boating. And they're going to want to send a claims adjuster out to verify that that $15,000, dollars job truly needs to be done. They're typically not boaters, so they really don't have any idea. And their job is to, as an adjuster, to protect the insurance company, not to protect you in most cases. So if they have to go through that adjustment process and they have to go through that claims process, that could take three or four weeks on top of the three or four weeks to fix your boat. And you're in the middle of the season. Maybe they're they're delayed. They pick the shop. Maybe you're delayed even further because that shop is, is slow. And now your three or four month season, you've given up three or four months because of that claim issue. And now you didn't get a chance to use your boat. It's important to know, even if it's going to um, cost you an extra 50 or 100 bucks a year, that speed of approval can be a major, major issue um, if, uh, if you lose a whole season. So how do you get the cheapest home insurance? In my experience, homeowners providers are going to have cheap insurance. It's going to be cheap insurance with poor coverage. There's going to be a lot of the things that we talked about. They're, they're going to be um, the market value. Uh, they're going to typically pick the shop. They're not going to have a um, have a, a high enough limit if there's a claim that there's automatic approval if it's by a certified shop. Um, they're typically going to pay a lower labor rate. Um, they're typically going to have um, the not as comprehensive a towing coverage. Now, on the other hand, the marine insurance providers, some of those are going to be great, but some of them specialize in different types of boats. And you're going to find the cheapest insurance, not just with the marine insurance provider, but one that provides and specializes insurance for the type of boat that um, that you have decided to uh, to buy. So here's my recommendation is get multiple quotes for the best and the cheapest coverage so you can compare okay i've got an agreed value policy uh they are gonna go through a, a fast approval process if it's under x dollar amount 10 or fifteen thousand is is usually a, a reasonable number they're gonna pay my shop or labor rate they're gonna let me choose the shop um and they are going to uh, have the towing coverage uh that's right with that, now you can choose the one that is going to be the best coverage at the best premium so that if you do have an issue, you're all set, even if it may cost you an extra 50 or 100 bucks a year. But here's the interesting thing. In most cases, the best coverage is actually on the cheaper side because they know the boating world. They specialize in it. So all of their actuarial tables are based on real world um, marine issues. They know how to sort out the ones that are going to be problematic. And they're able to, to keep their rates very, very competitive and sometimes even better than ones with worse coverage. So check that out. You'll, you'll find the best coverage at the cheapest price. Um, and that's ultimately what you want to get. So um if you don't, you should get the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Toolkit. Uh, it walks you through with checklists, questions to ask dealers and private sellers, how to maximize your trade, how to get the best boat loan. We touch on boat insurance so you can track it and figure out, okay, who's got the best coverage uh, at the cheapest at the cheapest rate, how to demo a boat the right way. That's yours free at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. We also, if you haven't negotiated your boat yet, we've got the magic money saving method at boatbuyerssecretweapon.com slash save. It's the best way to negotiate the best price of your boat. We'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Click that subscribe button. YouTube suggested some videos for you. Um, and if you've got a comment, you've got a question, you, you want to offer your advice, your opinion, maybe we screwed this up completely, and, and you, you say, they're totally wrong, I've been in insurance for 50 years, and this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, um, or if you've got a story that you want to tell, we would love to hear it, leave it in the comments, we always reply, usually within a day or two, and um, if you've got a specific question, we may even create a special video uh, just for you to answer that. So thank you very much, and we will talk to you next time.